This is Witchbase News for Friday the 21st of October 2022. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Frontier announced the launch window for update 14. There's a genuinely shocking twist in the Frontier livestream. We ask if Thargoid advocacy is doomed to failure. A creepy horror movie style treasure hunt appears in game for Halloween and more. We know you get bored of hearing this but it really does help our channel. If you enjoy our stuff hit like, subscribe and don't forget the pingy bell bit. You can also join our Patreon which directly supports the work we do here. As always you'll find links to everything you need below. If you're in the market for more Halloween themed ship cosmetics then there's multiple opportunities as we kick off the show this week. First up all manner of Halloween paint jobs, suits, bobbleheads and decals are on sale in the Frontier store until the 31st of October with 15 to 30% off. Frontier are also releasing Halloween paint jobs via their social media channels at random intervals for the next week or so. To be in with a chance of grabbing those just keep your eyes on Facebook, Instagram, the official forums and Twitter. A limited number of content creators, us included, have been given access to 5 codes that will grant the Malevolent Ghast exclusive ship paint job pack so keep an eye out for those. Your best bet for grabbing a freebie paint job however is via the Twitch drop system. The content creators on that platform that you can see listed on screen now have all got access to the Noctule Blight paint jobs which you are guaranteed to get just for tuning in and watching their streams. My thanks to Commanders Homburger and Alec Turner for this next gem of a story this week. If you're in the market for some new Elite Dangerous reading material then The Rodent Report is a new newspaper magazine style journal being published by the Fuel Rats. Whilst only still in its second issue the Rodent Report is already a polished, well constructed and professionally written journal featuring input from multiple writers and covering articles as diverse as the founding of the Fuel Rats, pilot rescue organisation, fuel ratting ship builds, interviews with Fuel Rats and even a recipe for a tasty looking lentil doll. There's even crossword puzzles, in universe horoscopes and classified ads adorning the pages. Currently the magazine seems to be published every 2 weeks and is available to view, download or print in PDF format. To check it out for yourself see the links in the video description below. Cast your mind back one week and you'll likely remember that in this very broadcast I was reporting the confirmation of the discovery of a fifth incoming Stargoid. What a difference a week can make. Since then not only was Stargoid number 6 discovered but as we were putting the show together today a seventh Stargoid was identified and is now being tracked by commanders and the Canon Unidentified Interstellar Anomaly Tracking Site. A screenshot of which you can see on screen now. And it presents a fairly stark image. That point where all the lines meet? That would be Sol. Arriving as they do in the wake of Salvation's shenanigans in HIP 22460 it's a widely accepted but not yet proven wisdom that the Stargoids are Thargoid in origin. The community goals this week that kicked off on Thursday concern themselves with the establishment of a proposed Xeno Peace Envoy vessel for use by the Thargoid Advocacy Project, an organisation that is currently pushing for more communication with our Terra Triffid neighbours and less, well, attempts to bring about their extinction. The prospect of communication with the hilariously murdery spacefaring sour salad has long been a requested feature in certain quarters of the player base and of late the idea has become a running theme in the games narrative. So is communication and a peaceful common ground after so much bad blood and icor actually possible? 
The jury is very much out on that subject at the moment but in the text for this weeks community goal pro Thargoid advocacy liberal minded candidate and federal governor Dalton Chase invokes a quote from the UK Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain in 1938 waving the Munich agreement in the air and claiming quote ''Peace in our time'' unquote. Less than a year later following the Munich agreement Europe was plunged into the second world war. I'll let you draw your own conclusions from that particular piece of signposting if indeed that's what it is. The regular discovery scanner post from Frontier that is released at the start of the week every week and sets up the player base for the week ahead contained a particularly juicy morsel this week. Update 14 to Elite Dangerous Odyssey which is the final announced update to the game this year is planned to arrive at the end of November. The update was announced way back in May this year and its headline feature has always been billed as quote ''the next major narrative phase'' unquote. Whilst back in May we had no idea what that narrative phase could possibly be referring to these days we are slightly more enlightened and as we reported earlier in this broadcast we are now staring down the throats of 7 incoming Stargoid interlopers whatever they are. So we think it's a fairly safe bet that the new narrative phase will be heralded and indeed concern itself at least in part with the expected arrival of the mysterious swirly green whatever they are. As we reported earlier in the week Frontier had announced that they had a big couple of weeks of cosmetic giveaways and events planned for the game in celebration of the Halloween spooky season. The events and giveaways were all to be kicked off by a special Halloween themed edition of the fortnightly Frameshift Live livestream on Thursday night. As well as all the cosmetics, giveaways and themed livestream Frontier had also made it clear that there would be a spooky themed in game treasure hunt event for commanders to participate in that would also reward cosmetics. What we didn't realise until we watched the stream last night was that the treasure hunt and the livestream were actually linked and that the livestream would kick off the treasure hunt in such spooktacular fashion. If you missed the livestream I've linked to a YouTube archive of it below and if you don't want the surprise spoiled then I'd recommend going to watch that first before carrying on here. With the spoiler warning out of the way if you're still with us here's how it went down. Hosted by Bruce and Sally with producer Adam working behind the camera the livestream featured the regular Galnet news roundup and stellar screenshot sections as well as extensive details on how to obtain the Twitch drop free paint jobs and cosmetics if you were watching live on Twitch. In addition to those regular expected features the livestream also featured games such as Pictionary played with the watching audience and further cosmetic giveaways. The real surprise in the livestream however was what, at first at least, appeared to be a production error. Early in the stream the video feed of the hosts Sally and Bruce was suddenly replaced by in game footage of a ship landing at an Odyssey settlement. Sally and Bruce made no mention of it and their face quickly returned as they continued talking. Later in the stream their images were again replaced by footage this time of a nefarious looking character in Reaver style armour walking slowly up to the settlement and taking a prolonged look at the settlement name. Again the hosts made no mention of the interruption in video and continued talking as if nothing untoward had happened. It was at this point that we figured something else was going on and immediately headed in game towards the settlement shown, Henry's piece in the RA system. Later the video was interrupted again showing the same dubious character heading toward the bar area and this prompted extensive searches of the habitat and bar area of the settlement with nothing unusual being detected. It was as the stream progressed however that proceedings took a suddenly more sinister turn. It's become the norm on FDEVs live streams of late for the hosts to be green screened into a setting in the game somewhere. Some weeks they'll be on a fleet carrier, another week they'll appear to be sitting in Vista Genomics etc. This week they were sitting in the bar area of an Odyssey surface settlement and during one section of the stream the character that had been seen approaching the settlement in game in oddly placed seemingly unconnected shots 
suddenly walked into frame behind the two FDEV hosts, paused for a moment and then ominously pointed at them before slowly walking out of shot again. It was then that it dawned on us here at the burr pit that they weren't green screened into just any random bar somewhere in the game. They were sitting in the bar at Henry's Peace in the RAR system. But the stream had one more surprise before it went off air. As Sally and Bruce were wrapping up the stream and saying their goodbyes the armoured character again walked into shot behind them this time much closer and this is what happened next. Uh, excuse me mate, can I help you? And just like that the stream ended. Immediately afterwards Galnet News sparked up in game with a story about three talk show hosts being murdered and a clue being found at the scene and that Galnet piece starts commanders off on the promised Halloween treasure hunt. I won't spoil what happens with the treasure hunt suffice to say it's typically dark and somewhat sinister as is a lot of elites lore and completing the treasure hunt will indeed reward some exclusive cosmetic items. All in all a very enjoyable stream and in game event. Definitely one for the history books. Hugely imaginative and brilliantly executed on stream by the team with a fantastic tie into the game itself as an extra spooky special payoff. Have you followed up on the clues on Galnet? Are you a believer in Thargoid advocacy and do you believe the Stargoids will stop at Lucky7? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. 